How's it going ladies and gentlemen, part two, and I've been putting this one off because to be honest, I am actually fairly nervous about this one. Fairly nervous indeed. This is that massive minty bee that was sent over by Diana and she wanted to get it cut. So I showed you in the previous video a really good method of just doing this step down between each of the color bars with the center diamond burr, just so that you can have a good look at each color bar and as we hit a dud one here, we just went down to the next one, dud one, next one, next one, next one. And we also checked this bonus little bar down here. And we found that this bar here looks really good. And then we did the same thing here, going from the opposite direction. And we found that there was another bar just here that looks like it has some potential as well. Now you're never 100% you're never with Mintaby, but it does look okay. Now off camera, I've just done a quick check to check from the opposite direction. Because if the opposite direction looks good, we can do a slice right down the middle. Now this slice is really precise and that's why I've been so nervous to do it. But I did check the bars and they still have a bit of potential in this direction. It seems just about the same as in the opposite direction. So a little blue one there and then a green, green one here which in some areas will be much, much better. But I only check the corners because you can do that without losing much of your final stone. So now that we've confirmed that there is definitely two good bars here and that they're facing pretty well in opposite directions we really want to get that slice done now there's a little bit of breathing room because at this end of the stone only one bar is present the other one kind of peters out and then from the other end that one is really strong and the other one peters out so there might be a spot somewhere around here where this top bar kind of runs out and over here, the same thing in this direction. There might be a spot over here somewhere where that bar just kind of peters out, which it looks like it is there, but really good down here. So we're hoping for two really, really big stones. This is such a huge piece. Check out video one if you want to see more, more details on this one. But today, I am going to really put the slicing skills to the test, and it's going to be really slow. It'll be much like the video that I've already done with the detailed slicing and we're just going to do slow scrapes along all four sides until we get to the middle and hopefully they meet up. I'll be using a fairly big, fairly big cutting wheel on this one. So that's this one just here. Now unfortunately it's not the top style that has the holes around the edge. I like that one. It seems to kick out a lot of the opal dust a lot easier. But it is the biggest one that I have and if you look at the stone it's going to be needed just to get to the halfway point each time. And even then, we're probably going to struggle to get all the way through. But we're going to give it a crack and see how we go. Hopefully we can make it. And hopefully we end up with two wonderful, wonderful slices that we will then finish cutting up. So let's get into it. As nervous as I am. Spin up the blade. So now I'll go over it really briefly because I've got a video exploring this idea in... Pretty, pretty deep detail. So all we're doing at first is we're going to just trace around the edges and you're almost doing it like you're sketching a picture. So you're just kind of swiping across the surface and the angle of the blade at this point in time is not important. I'll show you when it is important when we jump forwards. But right now we're just trying to basically pencil in a line. You want to see a nice clear line. You want it to be exactly where you want the cut to go. And we're going to do it around all four edges and that'll become really important once we start getting deeper and when the angles are really important because it's those lines that you're going to use a lot of the time to get the angles correct as soon as they become channels and not lines that's when we're really worried about the angle of our blade and we'll show that off in a second so we're just going along and we're just doing little little scratches Tiny little scratches. At this point, you just keep dipping it in the water, but it keeps itself pretty wet because we're not that far into it. And we just want to keep going. And then you'll see that I have to round around the edges. So you want these lines to all be attached. We're only sketching, but they need to be attached. And then we're going to jump forward. And you'll see here how important it is. The deeper the cut, the more precise your blade angling has to be. And we don't have much room between these bars. If there's a lot of space, you don't need to worry so much. But you want to get it in there and where I'm pointing with my index finger is actually where you're looking. You're lining the blade up with that to get that angle correct. So when you're cutting along any of the sides, you're looking at that opposing far corner and you're just making sure that your blade lines up. 
And you can see here, we're a long way through here. This is a, a little bit before the end, but it's quite a long, quite a long and large stone. So you've really got to keep an eye on that groove. And you can see if, if you wave your finger across the cut and you can see it perfectly fine on the other side, it means you're pretty straight and that you're not going too bad. And here I'm just showing the end. I always elect one end of a stone this large that's kind of the uh, the a little bit of wiggle room. So it's the end with not too much great color and we can uh, afford to have it a little bit out of line, but the rest we can't. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't had a look at this yet. My heart is pounding. All I've done is sliced almost all the way through and then all I did was give it a little bit of a squeeze, pinch, and it just clicked that last little part. Now the cut went almost as well as I could have imagined. It's as straight as an arrow, so as long as the color bars are straight, we should have a pretty decent result. The back end here is the one that I left right till the end, and you can see there, that's how far off it was at the back end, but perfect at the other end. So you've always got to have one weaker side. So I just chose the least important side, and what I'm imagining now is that this color bar, because I wanted to stay as far away from the best color bar as possible. I don't think we'll see this. I hope there's a layer of potch over the front, maybe a few speckles coming through. This other end and side, I don't think it's going to be that great. I reckon I've hit the color bar. I reckon we'll see a little bit of blue, but it's on this creamy kind of opal, which typically doesn't produce the best stone. So it was the one that I was least worried about. But look how straight that line is on three sides. It's a pretty much the best slice I've ever done and the most complicated but for the moment of truth god my heart hurts three two one all right let's have a look this side is about exactly what I thought it would be it is the classic directional mint to be don't worry that's not a massive crack running through the middle that's just a little bit of shelf that's been left behind from the unevenness of the cut. So you can see the cut was pretty close to perfectly straight. This little bit in the middle will be really easy to get rid of. You can see the color bar here just starting to peek through. I knew it was getting close to that color bar here, which is why I decided to cut a bit unevenly up this end and cut more into this one and save this one. I knew I could see a tiny edge when I was looking at it on an angle, but this is about exactly what I wanted to see. So you can see it's just about to come through. It's got a bit of sintered diamond work to go, but this I reckon is actually going to face. Oh, wow. We're going to end up with a hell of a stone in this one, I reckon, because we've already cheated and we've got an extra sneak peek here and here even through that last layer of potch, which could be, uh, it's still a good, maybe 0.3 of a mil or something of potch there. I reckon that's going to come up really nice. Really nice. The pattern is not what I thought it would be, but, you know, that's always hard to predict. But we're going to grind through the last of that, and I think we're going to end up with a hell of a stone there. This one, I'm not too sure. It's a bit directional, but maybe... Because here, that bar is still pretty thick. We might just need to give it a bit of a rub back as well. A little bit more of a rub back and maybe we do get a nice decent purple blue green it's I think it's no matter what it's going to be a bit directional so it's going to look kind of all right from this kind of angle but all in all it's going to be one of those stones that needs a lot of a lot of play a lot of movement to get it to sparkle but it does sparkle so not entirely wasted and of course it's absolutely massive both of these stones are still huge because we've lost absolutely nothing apart from a tiny little clipping over here. You know what? I'm going to grind this back a little bit more and we're going to have a deeper look. All right, and just like that, we're back. So here you can see the color has come through a little bit more. I still don't think I'm right down to the color bar, though on this side it does get pretty thin. It's just this edge, it looks like there's a little bit more. I've scrubbed through a little bit of the haze, but at this point I wouldn't want to go any further with the sintered diamond. And it's, it's just not quite the gem that I thought it was going to be. It was indicating a little bit more than this. It's a little bit directional, but I guess in the end, it's still a massive chunk of Minterby and it's got color. So it's not, it's not the classic Minterby not showing any color at all, except from the side of the bar. It's just a little bit directional. This one here, actually, it's turned out a bit better than I thought. It's also a bit directional, and it's just the color of the potch behind it that's letting it down, because it's quite a crystal, if you look at this little tab over here, 
It's quite a crystal bar, that one. And because it's got the creamy white kind of backing, it's got a little bit of an inclusion back there, deep, deep down in this other bar. You could possibly trim all of that other side down with a flat lap and then make a doublet that would be mind-blowing with that. But as it is now, it's just a fairly directional stone. They've both got a very similar color pattern. Just slightly more purple in one and more green in the other. So we'll, I'll just pause here and we'll think about what we're going to do in terms of shaping, if we're going to shape it too much at all or whether this is better off going to someone that's going to cab them up. The bars are incredibly thin, so it's going to have an uneven face on it which means not many people would want to really touch it unless they're a carver, but could definitely be made into two massive pendants or just sliced and diced and made into a whole bunch of littler stones, just a little bit directional. When we're dealing with Minterby, that's uh, much better than the worst case outcome where we get absolutely nothing at all. So not too bad. I'll, I'll, settle with a, I'll settle with a bit of a draw on this one. But yeah, on that note, we'll wrap it up here for now. You'll probably see them back again once the owners had a good look at them. We can decide what, where we want to go from here. I don't know what their end goal is with this. Unfortunately, I don't do silversmithing yet, so I can't really take it all the way to the to the finish line. So all I can do is shape however we decide to and polish. So yeah, on that note, I'm going to move on to the next stone because I've got three in the works at the moment and two of them are getting really exciting. One I'm about to throw in the bin. I'll see you in the next video.